Yeah. Life is supposed to be... Is it not very interesting? It's supposed to be very interesting. But... Uh, every day, we must leave our comfort zone. Or wherever we live. Or wherever our body is, where we sleep. Because... Uh, Apart from the importance of uh, moving around to shake our body and do exercise and get relevant, because you must have hopes and dreams. There is nobody who's alive who doesn't have hope and dream. Life's all about hoping and thinking that uh, whatever you wanted in time and space will come to pass. So, what do I mean by this? With our hopes and dreams, how do we realize what we expect in our lifetime? The fact is, yours truly, apart from religious folk who said, well, they just had dinner with the Lord or the Creator, nobody really knows. But the truth is, whether what they are saying is a fact or is a fallacy, and in a position to know that because we've got fellow who told you god told them or god called them to get into what they do and all over the world in different climb you see edifice big gigantic edifice all across the globe you find this edifice for an invisible creator nobody knows but we we believe each time we see a living being, we realize that uh, that is what we call the God or the Goddess. And that's what we believe is going to add solution to time and space and advance us because we believe we all belong to a certain pool of energies which are split into two, which is the negative and the positive energy. So if by implication before time in memoria, the early man was driven by intuition instincts. But they call that animism. Until early man began to feel there is the need to have something that could inspire them to do things which are beyond visibility. That's how theism came into be, to be born, which is a belief in some kind of uh, maybe God or gods. All across Africa in different uh, civilizations, they've always uh, celebrated different deities from the Yoruba Kingdom, Yoruba Might, Bene Kingdom, Ekaneme Kingdom, and all kingdoms across. So, but then, you don't know what you don't know because the way it is, and yet to say anybody is right or wrong, it all believe, depends on your belief because most people don't want their canoe to be rocked. But then, if it's a big ship in the ocean, whatever ocean you could be, there has to be an anchor which goes down deep. The anchor doesn't go deep enough. The winds will blow. It will shake the ship. It ain't going to take it from a certain spot. It will stay there. But at a point in time, like we're meant to believe that money rules the whole world and money is the most important thing, in every way, because even when you go to religious places or centers of worship, they tell you you don't have to come empty-handed. They said each time you come before the presence of our Creator, you must bring a sacrifice. But they do the same thing in our shrines too. Don't they? If you go to the shrine, they'll tell you to sow a seed. Because if you promise that, okay, this is what you want, and you are answered by the universe, there must be a sacrifice and it must be continuous, it must be renewed. What it means is that you cannot get anything without offering something. But I think uh, in the order of nature, it's supposed to be symbiotic. It's give and take. But right in the left side or the middle of our chest, there's something which we call the generator. You may want to say it's a heart, but the heart pumps. It doesn't pump red and white blood capsules which are circulating in your system. But if you touch a thing, how do you know that it hurts? 
or how do you feel is interesting, either warm or cold. This message is sent by the mirror neurons, interpreted between your two ears. Maybe you, you could be looking at something, but you will not realize what it is. Your eyes are wide open. Your eyes can't see. What sees in you is your mind. What we call the third eye, which could be amplified by your planar glands. With some school of thought has stirred the fluorine in some of our toothpaste is not good for. That's why they suggested that herbal remedies are the best. So, but the truth is, you don't know what you don't know. As I'm speaking to you now, I can feel, I can feel the air blowing me. It's cool. The sun is hitting me, but the sun is not therapeutic. If you get shut off from the storm in one cell, maybe a little cell, and you are there for ages, will you not go nuts? Naturally, you became insane because each time you are exposed to the sun, the sun hits you, but the sun also hits you. So around the equator where we live, where we happen to be born, which is our home climb, we have no regret. Would I have said that it would have been better if I was born in Russia? Why should I regret where I'm from? And that is what I see wrong with my people in Africa here. We venerate foreign things and believe that foreigners will solve our problem. If they have not been able to solve their own problem, can they solve yours? If a man is angry, if they say right from 1970, from the Kitsinger agenda, from the Western countries, in particular, we say maybe the Yankees said, they believe in depopulating the population of Africa. Because why? Because of what we have under the soil, which right from the 18th century, where the Pope called the conference, where there was a meeting about how to delineate Africa, in which no African country was in our tender. We weren't born then, but these are all tips and bees we pick from information we've gathered over time and space. How can there be an African agenda meeting of which all countries all over the world, especially in Europe, we are in attendance, but no other Africa, no African country was in attendance. How can you bab a man in his own absence? Is that done? Do you expect to be justified by the loss of people who don't have any iota of benefit by your being alive or dead? Of course, if you are out of existence, it will be better for them. Whether you like it or not, Africa has to be in the center of the world and it occupies the center of the universe in terms of what we have under the earth. We don't even know it. It's all an estimate. Everything is estimated. So, but then, are we not living in a continent where the poorest of people, in the midst of all these resources, with human and material resources, we are still one of the most poverty-sticking nations. Maybe India used to be poorer than us, but now we're not overtaking. The problem is not that uh, we do not have everything. What has happened is that we've been governed by people who never had our interests at heart. People who never really give a damn. If you want to count them, how many can you really count? You are people who are really passionate and authentic. Everybody must, of course, all the people from the West, in most climes, are very patriotic about their people. But most African people, why would they be patriotic? Right from uh, before the time they even invaded the Bini Kingdom in the 18th century, they're about. We've always been betrayed by our own love people. You cannot have an enemy. Your worst enemy has to be the enemy you have in your house. And who is your enemy? He has to be part of your family. If you is not part of your loved one, how can he hate you? It has to be love which reverse. Because that's the way it is. Sometimes, because uh, some people are overlooked, you really don't ask them for what their equity contribution is. They begin to, because they get everything, they begin to claim the universe gave it to them, that they were born to receive those favors, and that is not the way it is. So you need to change an attitude and make sure everybody around you is paying a price, or else, in time and space, they won't realize what value added to their life.